Hi, Steve here. And in this exposure blending tutorial, you're going to learn how to blend three bracketed exposures in Photoshop using my luminosity masking panel. Now this full landscape editing walkthrough shows my end to end process for creating a natural looking HDR image using the Photoshop actions panel that I personally designed and coded. So if you want to take the otherwise complicated process of exposure blending with luminosity masks and see how quick and easy it can be, then watch all the way to the end of this video because you'll see how the panel can make your entire workflow even easier than ever. And if you don't have the panel, then you'll still get a lot out of this video walkthrough because you can still use these luminosity masking processes manually, building masks and selections from scratch, like how I teach in a number of other videos and courses. Or alternatively, you can download the panel at luminositymaskingpanel.com or you can click the link in the description below. Now, before we get started, if you like this video, then hit that thumbs up button to let me know so I can keep on making more just like it. And you can subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell notification icon to be notified by YouTube every time I publish a new video. So for this walkthrough, we're going to be using three bracketed exposures that I captured a couple of weeks back at La Perouse in Sydney. And I've just loaded each one into its own layer in Photoshop. So we've got three exposures here. One, two, three. So we've got the bright exposure, the dark and the middle. Now, because this middle exposure is actually the closest to a correct exposure um, out of the three, then I'll use this as kind of the base exposure and then blend the other two into this one. And so the first step to do that is to add a layer mask to this top layer. So we look at the, uh, the sky over here that's just a little bit overexposed and we're going to bring through some of the color in the sky from this dark layer beneath. So we'll add that layer mask, hitting the little icon down here, and that gives us a white layer mask. And we can brush through here with a black brush to reveal the dark layer beneath. But I want to load a luminosity selection first so that it only brushes in and kind of blends that darker selection, uh, that darker exposure through in the areas where this top layer is brightest. So to do that, we can go the long way around creating a luminosity mask through the channels panel, but we're using the luminosity masking panel for this demo. So here I've got that loaded just in its own window on the right hand side of the screen. And I'm just going to turn the previews on so that I can see when I select a uh, one of these buttons to load a selection, that's going to give me a preview to show me essentially what you would be seeing in the channels panel when uh, building a selection. So you can basically decide whether it's uh, creating a high enough contrast isolation for you. So in this panel, the way this works, anything to the right of the zero here on this bar is going to select the uh, the highlights. And the further towards the right that you go, so a five is going to select only the very, very brightest highlights. And a one is going to select like everything to the right of the histogram, basically. And then the two, three and four is kind of a, yeah, stepping up um, a different kind of level in between one and five. So let's start out trying, let's go for a three on here. And so we'll try and select something that's about midway. And this is okay. The sky here is still a bit bright. You know, I don't really want to brush too much of that through. Um, let's try a four. It's going to give us a bit more isolation. Um, okay, let's try this. So when, I, when I'm happy that I've got the right selection loaded, I can click the use mask button and I can press command or control H on the keyboard to hide the marching ants. I'll take my black brush on about 30% opacity, maybe a bit lower. And um, we'll just brush through the sky here a little bit. And it's just subtly bringing through some of that blue in the background there behind the uh, clouds. And just over here as well. So we don't want to bring too much through. I don't want to kind of make this really, really dark at this point. Let's see the effect of that. So if I now shift click on this layer mask, that will disable it for a moment. So we'll see the before and after of what I've just done there. And if I press Alt or Option on the keyboard and click, we can actually see the layer mask and we can see how much of this top layer I've masked out, therefore revealing the layer beneath. 
So that's pretty good. That's a nice subtle adjustment. And we can see the luminosity mask has restricted our brush stroke to the sky. Uh, it's still blended through some of that darker cloud, but just because it's a lighter gray in the mask, thanks to that luminosity selection, it's not blended it through as much as in this brightest part here. So that's pretty good. I would say that I'm happy with that blend so far. So now I'm just going to deselect my selection, Command or Control D. And now it's time to bring the brighter exposure through just to brighten up this building and some of the foreground. So I'm going to just drag it to the top here now. And I'm going to add a black layer mask. So I'm going to hold Alt or Option on the keyboard as I click my Add Layer Mask button. And that adds a black layer mask. And so now we just need to kind of do the opposite of what we just did by creating a selection that isolates the foreground. And most importantly, this building should be isolated uh, from the sky in the background. So we need to select the shadows here. So I'll try a two on this side. So that's, that's okay. Let's go all the way from a one through to a five and see what each one gives us. So this is a three. So that's getting that's getting close. So you know the the building here is mainly grey and white. The sky is obviously a lot darker behind that. So what I'll do just to try and really pick out that building, uh, I'm just going to modify the uh, the preview here. Um, and I've got a button over here that just shortcuts to the levels um, the levels adjustment. And any changes we make here are going to be applied directly to this preview of my selection. So we want to make the bright bits bright, dark bits darker. So I'm just going to slide this up until those sort of gray bits in the sky, those little bits of cloud just disappear there. And that's about right. So now I can click OK and apply that. And now that I've got rid of those gray wispy bits in the cloud, I can actually grab my uh, burn, uh, no, dodge tool. Got to get this the right way around. Uh, so I can grab the dodge tool and I can choose the uh, highlights here in the range drop down. Let's try about 50% here. And we can just brighten this up now. Um, maybe I can grab the mid-tones here and that'll just get some of those greys. So, you know, we can just uh, really isolate that building even more just using the dodge and burn tool, well, the dodge tool in this case. Um, now I have brought through a little bit, there was a little bit of that wispy cloud just hanging around, so I'll switch to the burn tool. And if I burn the shadows, then essentially it's not going to touch anything in this building now because it's just white. So I can just eliminate that bit of cloud from behind there. And okay, let's just see if we can just tidy this, or get this foreground a little bit brighter. Okay, we don't need to be a million percent here, but we can just get rid of most of this. And Okay, that should do us. So I'm going to click Use Mask. Now that I'm happy that I've got a decent selection. And because this is quite a good selection, I'm probably going to reuse it. So I'm just going to save it in the Channels panel. So I'm just going to go to Channels here and click the Save Selection as Channel button. And so now we've got that Alpha 1 channel that's, uh, yeah, we can come back to this and just load it again if we need to later. So back over into layers. Now we've still got the selection active. I can just hide the marching ants, Command or Control H. Uh, just grab my brush. And now with a white foreground color, just clicking in the mask, we can start brushing. Actually, that's too strong. Um, let's go down to maybe 10%. So this is a real subtle uh, brightening here that I want to do. So. Oh, I've gone back to the burn tools. Excuse me one second. So brush tool. Um, let's go about 25%. Maybe that's what I did wrong first time. Okay, now this will do. So just now blending this foreground in. 
So we're revealing this top brighter layer by uh, yeah, just brushing through this active selection to mask the uh, the darker or to mask the brighter layer in. So that's probably a little bit too bright actually in the in the building. So I'll just switch back to a black brush and just bring that back down a little bit. So I don't want to overblend. I don't want to make things. I don't want to make it brighter than it should be. But I think that's looking pretty nice. So that's our blend. So going back to this is the dark layer. Actually, uh, we started with the middle one, didn't we? So this is our middle layer. And this is um, without the layer mask applied. So this is the original middle exposure. Here's the dark exposure from which we're borrowing a little bit of that color in the sky. And then here with our bright exposure, we're just bringing up the brightness in the foreground and in the building just to make that exposure even so, you know, from this point on, we can make our adjustments and um, yeah, and just basically starting from a position where as soon as we start adding contrast, it's not just going to blow the highlights or blow the um, the shadows in the histogram. So at this point in the workflow, I would normally look at what I can do to make any color tweaks and adjustments. So you can do that. There's a million and one ways to uh, to adjust the color. But I think what I'd like to do is just try and bring out a bit more warmth in the image because this uh, this sunset was really it was on a day there was a lot of bushfires. I think some back burning was happening near Sydney and there was a lot of smoke in the sky and it was a really warm, hazy sunset. So I'm just going to use the uh, warming filter in my uh, luminosity masking panel under the color section. So I'm just going to hit that button there and that will create this group of layers, which is our warming filter and it will give it a black layer mask so that we can either mask it in with a brush or what I'll do this time is just invert the mask to apply that effect to the whole image. And I think that actually looks quite nice in it. Definitely uh, gives it more of that warm feel that I kind of felt and saw when I was capturing these exposures. So I think that's just one quick adjustment that works really nicely there. What I'll do next is start to add some contrast because I think with the colors and the contrast in the image at the moment, just a couple of uh, really simple contrast adjustments is really going to start to make it pop. So I'm just going to shortcut here in my luminosity masking panel under the light section. I've got a few curves and levels contrast presets. So actually the levels ones are dynamic. So they um, adjust to different settings based on the actual image. So, you know, if we hit this levels one button now on my image, then if you use the same button on your own image, the, uh, the preset here is going to be slightly different. Um, but yeah, that's quite a nice sort of basic um, contrast adjustment. I think I would like to just see if I can push it a little bit further and make that foreground really pop. Now we are exposing, um, overexposing the sky. So we'll just have to mask that out. But I think it works really well in the foreground. So we'll keep that. And now let's see, should I? Yeah, I think, yeah, we'll just grab a, uh, a highlight selection, maybe a two, and I'll click use mask. And with the black brush on about 30% this time, I'll just brush this through here just to recover that sky. So it's keeping a little bit of the contrast because I'm not brushing it to complete uh, black in the uh, in the mask. So it's keeping a bit of the contrast from this levels adjustment, but not you know, all of it enough that it's going to overexpose anything. Now at this point, I think the um, you know, it's looking really nice already. So if we just go back to that first um, exposure blend here with the highlights blended in from the dark exposure uh, compared to now, 
you know, that's really brightened it up nicely and added a lot of nice color. Uh, but I probably would like to uh, go a bit darker in the sky. So again, I've just got a shortcut here. There's a, a couple of uh, options for darkening the image that I've got in the luminosity masking panel. This one here, multiply. Um, actually, I'll undo that because I had my luminosity selection active. So Command D or Control D to deselect, and now I'll hit that multiply button, and that darkens the image by creating an adjustment layer and then putting it into multiply blend mode and then reducing the opacity to 50%. So that's a really nice darkening method that I like to use quite often. Uh, in this case, I only really want it in the sky. So I'll come back and use my saved alpha one channel here, which um, was that saved selection from a few steps ago. Uh, but which way around do we need to do this? Okay, so I'll invert the mask to hide this effect back over into the channels panel and I actually need to invert this channel so I'm going to press command or control I and the reason I need to do that is because I want to brush through in the sky um, so now if I yeah so therefore that needs to be white in the selection or in the channel that I'm loading as a selection so to load that now command or control click on the alpha one channel back over into layers click on the uh, layer mask with a white brush now I can just gradually bring that darkening effect through into the image and you can see here that's being restricted to the sky only uh, you know it doesn't matter how many times I click on the building here we're not going to be um, you know, we're not going to darken the building at all there because the layer mask is not going to let me or the, the luminosity selection, I should say. Okay, so deselect. Let's see where we are now. So it's quite a nice, subtle darkening of the sky. Now we can try making it a stronger effect and darkening it even more by increasing the opacity of this layer, but I probably like it around about that 50 or 60% amount. So we'll keep that. And now what I think I'll do, uh, the image could still use a little bit more contrast in the midtones. So how you would do that with the luminosity panel is uh, this zero button here on the luminosity selections bar that's going to load a selection that isolates the midtones. And if I click use mask now, then I can add a curves contrast adjustment. And then when I do that with this selection active, it's going to load that selection straight into the layer mask. So here we've got a subtle contrast adjustment and it's only adjusting kind of the middle section of the histogram. So in theory, there's, uh, you know, it's not going to overexpose any highlights or underexpose any shadows. There's always still a possibility that might happen depending on how strong of an effect I create here. Um, but yeah, I think that's quite a nice subtle adjustment and works quite well. So from this point on, it's probably just a case of going around the image and making some localized adjustments uh, using, well, my favorite method of adding contrast is the levels adjustment. So let's just see what happens if we add a couple more of these. So, okay, let's look at the foreground here and see what we can do with the foreground just by brightening it up with this uh, highlight control point. I actually quite like what this is doing to the building. The uh, This rock here through the middle looks pretty good as well. So, okay, let's keep that. And now let's invert the mask to hide it. Let's come back into the channels panel. And again, let's invert this alpha channel so the foreground is white because I want to be brushing through into the foreground when I load this. Uh, so command or control, click on alpha one. Back over into layers, click on the layer mask. And with a white brush, probably go quite large. With a white brush, I'll just start to gradually apply this effect in the foreground. I think it actually looks best in the 
in the building there. So I'll try and bring that through to 100% there. And then not so much in the corners. We can kind of create a bit of a, a bit of a manual vignette just by leaving the corners a little bit darker. So this is now the effect of this adjustment. Quite subtle, but effective, I think. Now, let's just see if there's anything else we can do. If I just reopen this, if I just push it any further, what's that going to look like? Okay, I think that's probably ideal where it is there. So from here, I think I could go on and make, uh, you know, a bunch more minor contrast adjustments all throughout the image, but that might get a little bit repetitive. Uh, so one thing I will do, however, before I sign this video off is just have a look over here. Um, I noticed this when I was blending the exposures, but I figured we would leave this till the end. Uh, so we've just got a bit of movement there. Uh, this person was walking um, and managed to take what looks like to be about one stride in between me taking these two exposures. So rather than try to fix that up, I'll probably just try and clone it out. So to do that, let me just add a new layer and I'll start out using the uh, spot healing brush tool and just see if we can get rid of them that way. Looks to be quite effective so far. Mm, that's not, okay, that's not too bad. Yeah, okay, well that will do for now for the purpose of this demo. Uh, we managed to get rid of that ghost over there on the, uh, on the edge of the image. So I think in terms of uh, this image being processed, it's probably 90% of the way there. Uh, as I said, the rest of the process would just be further refinements to the contrast and maybe just tidying up any little bits of dodgy stuff like this little dot in the middle here. Uh, maybe if I wanted to clean the bird poo off of the rock, I might do that. Um, but then the final piece of the puzzle um, would be sharpening. So I've got a sharpening method here in the luminosity panel. Uh, we can just hit the button there and that will create a um, sharpening layer for me. And it's a process that uses the high pass filter to sharpen. And again, it's one of those functions in the panel that is based on the resolution of your image. So it will apply the appropriate level of, um, of that high pass filter based on your, uh, you know, based on the size of your image. I'm not quite sure why this has taken this long. Um, I think my computer is under a lot of stress at the moment. Uh, my hard drive is probably nearly full, so bad practice I know, but yeah, that's where we are. So that's why this is taking a long time. I'm not sure if that was hard drive or memory issues, who knows, um, but anyway. That should only take a second or two. Um, but so, yeah, here now we have that sharpening layer and I can just take a white brush. So B on the keyboard and just take a white brush and, you know, brush some extra sharpness and detail into this rock maybe. And if I wanted to be super accurate up here on the building, I could load my alpha one channel again. So command click, control click on the alpha one channel and then brush into the building so that, you know, with that selection active, I'm not sharpening the sky. It's just the building here. So that's a real subtle adjustment. I'm not sure you're going to actually see that in the video unless you're watching it at full screen in 4K resolution. Um, but yeah, so I guess you just have to take my word for the fact that it's uh, adding a bit of sharpening there to the building. Uh, but otherwise, we're pretty much there for this image. And so that's all I wanted to show you today, really. Um, just that process of blending those three exposures using the luminosity masking panel. And of course, uh, to let you know about the panel, that you can download it at luminositymaskingpanel.com or click the link in the description below this video. So thanks for watching. See you next time.